All right, so I thought we would do an example. Let's find the Laurent expansion for this function e to the 1 over z. And let's realize that this function is analytic on the annulus uh, z naught bigger than 0. You just need to delete 0, and then everything else we're good to go on. So um, let's start with e to the z, right? We know e to the z uh, has serious expansion n equals 0 to infinity z to the n over n factorial. Well, I'm just going to plug in a 1 over z. So uh, e to the 1 over z is what? n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial z to the n. The 1 over z is a, oh, whoops, that is not what I wanted to do. The 1 over z, uh, this z to the n becomes a 1 over z to the n, and you can just put it downstairs. And so this thing looks like 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial z plus, let me erase, um, 1 over 2 factorial z squared plus so on and so forth. And again, this is valid for, uh, whoops, um, and I can't write today, the modulus of z bigger than 0 and less than infinity. So by the way, uh, using our old notation, right, a sub n is 0 for n greater than or equal to 1. I guess I should say a naught is just 1. And then b sub n is 1 over n factorial for n greater than or equal to 1. I think you probably got this idea last time, but I, I just want to point out to you that uh, because you know the value of the coefficients, these b sub n's and the a sub n's, you actually know the value of a lot of integrals as well. So just to be clear, you know that b1 is 1 over 2 pi i integral over any closed contour c around 0 uh, e to the 1 over z dz. And you know that's just 1. So this particular integral, right, this guy, you now know is exactly 2 pi i without doing any work. And again, my c, I probably should write it, but I'm, I'm not just for time's sake. c here is any positively oriented simple closed curve around the origin. So uh, we can use these series to actually evaluate integrals uh, because we know the value of the coefficients in a lot of cases. All right, so I wanted to show you some other notation. So sometimes it's convenient to write a Lorentz series in one series rather than in these two different series, one in terms of positive powers of z, the other negative. Sometimes we'll combine it. And so uh, how does this go? Well, you can write it this sum from n equals minus infinity to infinity. That's already amazing and cool. Uh, c sub n, z to the z naught, z minus z naught to the n. And then how does it go? Well, because we, we, we want to have our formula for the cn's. Well, cn is just 1 over 2 pi i integral over c f of z. Uh, this, sorry, this is f of z. f of z, z minus z naught to the n plus 1 dz. And here, n is equal to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2. So the same formula works. If you want to get the coefficient on the negative 2 power of z, you just plug in a negative 2 there and it works. So this is pretty nice notation and uh, you're welcome to use it. The book does both, so I, I wanted to do both as well. But just to be clear now, I guess, so here our, with our old notation, right, a1 would be the same as c1, a2 is c2, so on and so forth. a0 is c0. Uh, let's put that up here. But then with the b's, right, b1 would be c to the minus 1, b2 is c to the minus 2, so on and so forth. So the negative c's are just the, the b's. So not a big deal. Um, hopefully that won't cause you any trouble. OK, uh, let's look at another comment. So it turns out that uh, if f is analytic on an annulus a, then you know that f has a unique Lorentz series expansion on A. But this is going to be a little disturbing. If you change the annulus, you might change 
the Lorentz series. So F may have a different Lorentz expansion on a different annulus. So I thought uh, w we should do an example, but let's do an example of this in the next video. We'll end here.